In one of the previous lectures, we learned about the different data types which MongoDB supports. And there we learned that to a field of a document, we can also assign another document. And that document is called as nested or embedded documents. So an embedded document is a document assigned to a field of another document. It is nested inside another document. So in this lecture, let's learn in detail what is a nested or embedded document and how we can work with it. So in this example, here we have a document. In this document, we have this name field assigned with a string value, age field assigned with a numeric value, is active field assigned with a Boolean value. And in here, we also have this subscription type. And to this field, we are assigning another object. We are assigning another document. So here, this document is nested inside this outer document. Now, if we go inside this nested document, there we have this type field assigned with a string value. And then we have a renewal date field, which is again assigned with an object, a document. And this document is nested inside this document, this subscription type document. And in this nested document, we have this day field, month field, and year field. So here you can see we have a nested document inside another nested document, which is nested in this outer document. So as we learned, a nested document is that document which is assigned to a field of another document. Okay. So in simple words, we can say that embedded documents are those documents which are assigned to a field of another document, which is nested inside an outer document. Now, there are two things which you need to remember about embedded documents. First of all, you can have nested documents of up to 100 level depth. For example, this renewal date document, it is nested inside this subscription type document. And this subscription type document is nested inside this outer document. So the subscription type is the first level of nesting. This renewal date is the second level of nesting because it is nested inside another nested document. And in this way, we can have up to 100 level of nesting. We can have a nested document inside a nested document inside a nested document. And this can go till 100 level of nesting. If you want to embed a document, inside a document which is nested on 100th level then that nesting will not be allowed maximum you can have 100 levels of nesting and the second point to remember is that the overall size of the document the overall size of this outer document must not exceed 16 mb so this main document this outer document will have a maximum of 16 mb size it cannot exceed that 16 megabyte size. So if you are nesting documents inside this main document, you need to make sure that the size of this outer document does not exceed 16 MB. For example, here you see we have this purchases field inside which we have two nested product documents. Now here we have only two documents, but let's say a user has purchased maybe thousand products. So in that case, we are going to specify those thousand products in this array. And this can lead to increase in size of this main document, this outer document. So it is possible that when we try to store thousand products in this purchases array, it might exceed the size of this outer document to 16 MB. But a document cannot have a size more than 16 MB. So we need to make sure that whenever we use embedded document, the size of the outermost document, the main document remains less than 16 MB. All right. So now that we know what is an embedded or nested document, let's now learn how we can work with embedded documents. So let's go to Mongo shell. And currently we are in the eShopping database. Here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to query the first document from the user's collection. For that, I'm going to use find one method. And here, if I press enter, it is going to return us the first document from the user's collection. There you will see that we have this subscription type field. And the subscription type field is storing an embedded document. In this embedded document, we have this type field, which is assigned with the string value monthly. And we have this renewal date field, which is again assigned with a nested document. And in that nested document, we have this day property, month property, and year property. 
okay so now what i want is i want to filter all those users whose subscription type is let's say yearly so in this users collection we have total 10 users out of those 10 users i want to filter all the users whose subscription type is monthly let's see how we can do that so for that again on the users collection we are going to use find method and in this find method we are going to specify a filter criteria now how this filter criteria should look like so basically we want to filter all the documents where the subscription type is monthly and this type property it is present in an object and that object is stored in this subscription type field so here first of all we are going to access the subscription type field so name is subscription underscore type this is storing an object in that object we have this type property so here we can say dot type and since we are using dot notation here we need to wrap it within double quotes as we learned in the last lecture whenever we have a dot notation in the property name we need to wrap it within double quotes and here i want to filter all those users whose subscription type is yearly okay if i go ahead and if i run this command it is going to return us all the users whose subscription type is yearly so as you can see this document here the subscription type is yearly then for the second document also the subscription type is yearly and for this third document also the subscription type is yearly okay let's clear the shell and let's also filter the documents where the subscription type is monthly let's run this command and here we have these many documents where the subscription type is monthly so for this document the type is monthly for this document also the subscription type is monthly so for this document also the subscription type is monthly so in this way we can filter documents using the property of an embedded document something like this okay let's go ahead and let's clear this shell now let's learn how we can update a field of an embedded document so for that again i'm going to use this find method okay let's find all the documents and here for sophie lee the subscription type is monthly so for her i want to change the subscription type to let's say yearly so first of all let me copy this object id let me clear this shell and let me go ahead and let me use find one method and let's filter the document where the name is sophie lee and i'm going to filter the document using its underscore id property and just now we copied that object id so i'm going to use that and let's filter that document so we here we have that document where the name is sophie lee and the subscription type as you can see it is monthly now i want to change this subscription type to yearly so for that on the db object we are going to access the users collection because we want to update a document in the users collection and to update the document since we want to update a single document i am going to use update one method okay to this update one method first we need to pass an object now this object is the filter object so first of all we need to specify the filter criteria here i am going to filter the user using its underscore id property so i have copied the object id so i want to filter that document where the object id is this one and once that document is filtered i want to update it for that here i am going to pass the update document there i am going to use dollar set operator and what do we want to update there we want to update the subscription type so again let's use double quotes here for the property name because here we are going to use dot notation so the property name is subscription underscore type so this subscription underscore type is storing this object where we have this type property in that object let's try to access the type property and we want to set it to yearly okay let's go ahead and let's run this command and again here we have a syntax error that's because after this set here i am opening the object and also closing it immediately okay so this was the syntax error let's try to update it one more time 
and again we have the error so what i'll do is let me go and let me copy this command from here let's paste it here okay so here i'm using update one method there first i'm passing the filter object so i want to filter the document using its id property okay then i'm using this comma and i'm using this dollar set property something is wrong here underscore id is this one that's correct after that we have comma i'm using dollar set property then subscription type i am setting yearly and all right i have not closed that dollar set now it should be okay i guess let's copy this let's clear the shell here let me go ahead and let me call this find one method one more time where we are filtering this sophie lee document and now i'm going to paste what i have copied from vs code and now i'm going to run this command so here i'm going to filter the document using this object id so it is going to return us this document and in that document i'm trying to set this subscription type from monthly to yearly as you can see let me go ahead and let me press enter so you can see modified count is one and now if i run the find command again there you will see that now the subscription type has changed to yearly earlier it was monthly so the name is sophie lee and here also you will see the name is sophie lee but now the subscription type for her has changed to yearly okay let's clear the shell and let me again run this command where we have this document where the name is sophie lee now what i want is i also want to set the renewal date year from 2025 to 2026 so again let me write it here itself so now we want to filter the document using this object id so basically we want to filter this document where the name is sophie lee for that i'm going to filter it using its underscore id property and to that i have assigned the object id of that document and there now i want to update the document and in the subscription type we have another property called renewal date let me copy this property name and let's access that renewal date and in that renewal date we also have this year property so this renewal date it is also storing a document where we also have this year property and currently its value is 2025 now i want to change its value to 2026 so let me copy this command from here and let me paste it here and then i'll explain what i'm doing so i'm filtering this users collection and i'm filtering using this underscore id field so i'm filtering that document where the object id is this and in that document i want to set this year of this nested document of this renewal date to 2025 now this renewal date is a nested document which is nested inside this subscription type and the subscription type is itself a nested document so on this subscription type field which is storing a nested document we have this renewal date field and this renewal date field is also storing a nested document and in that nested document we have this year field so we are accessing that year field and we are trying to change its value to 2026 if i go ahead and if i press enter you will see that there is one modified count so that means one document has been modified and now if i go ahead and if i run find one command again by filtering the document using this object id you will see that now the year of the renewal date has changed to 2026 so for sophie lee now the renewal date is in 2026 earlier for the same user the renewal date was in 2025 so this is how we can update the fields of a nested document let's clear the shell by typing cls command 
and it is also possible to access the value of a nested document field for example here i am filtering the document using this find one method so this find one method it is going to return us an object in that object we are going to have a subscription type field so it is subscription underscore type in that subscription type field we have renewal date field and this renewal date is also storing a nested document and in that nested document we have a month field so in this way after accessing the main document we are going to the field of that document which in this case is subscription type and this subscription type is storing another document a nested document so from that nested document we are accessing this renewal date field and again this renewal date field is also storing a nested document so in that nested document we have this month field and we want to access the value of that month field from this renewal date field so if i go ahead and if i press enter it should return us the value of that month field which in this case is 4. if i go ahead and if i try to access the year field the year should be 2026 because that's what we change it to so you can see it is returning us 2026 if i want to get let's say the subscription type so for that on the subscription type i can access the type property if i press enter it is going to return us the subscription type which is yearly so in this way we can also access the value of a field of a nested document all right so here we learned and understood about nested document a nested document is a document assigned to a field of another document it is nested inside another document we will learn and use nested documents a lot in our coming lectures nested documents will be used mainly to create a relation between two different data entities so when we will start learning about relation between documents in mongodb there we will understand the use of nested document and it will also clarify the main use case of having nested documents and how to query them and use them this was a very high level overview of what a nested document is and how to work with nested documents in mongodb this is all from this lecture if you have any questions then feel free to ask it thank you for listening and have a great day